The subject of paleoanthropology is notorious for its contentious arguments, one of which has raged for years is the evolutionary genesis of modern humans. We frequently forget how huge Africa is. The distance from the cradle of humankind in South Africa to the cradle of humanity in Ethiopia is over 3,000 miles, or almost 5,000 kilometers. This is around the same distance as from Ethiopia to Spain or from Ethiopia to China. Only the southern part of Africa is in the southern hemisphere, whereas the vast northern part of Africa is in the northern hemisphere. Because this region differs from the northern section of Africa, the south is sometimes referred to as the African subcontinent. This location is located about parallel to Australia, hence it is exceptionally far south. What's more, Several studies from the Southern Hemisphere report that the origin of anatomically modern humans can be traced to Southern Africa. The Kabwe Cranium, also known as the Broken Hill Skull or Rhodesian Man, is a story that spans thousands of hundreds of years in Southern Africa's heartland. The Kabwe Cranium, estimated to be 300,000 years old, was an early human ancestor from the Middle Pleistocene period. This preserved skull from a previously unknown species sheds light on the lifestyles of our distant predecessors and the environment they lived in. The skull was discovered in what was then known as Rhodesia and is now known as Zambia in southern Africa. A new procedure used on the skull allowed for the removal of some quarter millimeter thick shards, allowing the skull to be directly dated, with the age range being 324,000 to 274,000 years ago. This ancient artifact, discovered in 1921 near the village of Kabwe, provides insight into the life of a remarkable ancient humans who lived hundreds of thousands of years ago. The species is also known as the African Neanderthal, despite having intermediate characteristics between Homo sapiens and Homo neanderthalensis, as well as a close relationship to Homo heidelbergensis. It has also been hypothesized that it was the ancestor of early Homo sapiens, which in turn were the ancestor of Homo sapiens sapiens. The skull implies an incredibly robust individual with the most pronounced brow ridges of any known hominid. The skull is characterized as having a broad face, comparable to Homo neanderthalensis. In addition to the cranium, an upper jaw from another individual, a sacrum, a tibia, and two femur pieces were discovered. The original 1921 description of the skull from a paper titled A New Caveman from Rhodesia, South Africa, says, quote, Its brain case is typically human, with a wall no thicker than that of the average European, and its capacity, though still unknown, is obviously well above the lower human limit. Its massive and heavy face is even more simian in appearance than that of Neanderthal man, with huge inflated brow ridges that are notably conspicuous and extended, particularly at the lateral angles. The newly discovered Rhodesian man may reignite the notion that Neanderthal man is a true ancestor of Homo sapiens. Homo rhodesiensis retains a Neanderthal-like face, along with a more contemporary brain case and skeleton. He could be the next step up from Neanderthal in the escalating succession, the report concluded. Rhodesian man had a muscular build, with strong brow ridges and a broad face. Nonetheless, the Kabwe skull's owner was a strong and adaptive hominid. The Kabwe individual's physical traits, including a high brow ridge and a big brain case, separated them from earlier human progenitors and foretold the advent of our own species, Homo sapiens. During this time, the region around Kabwe had a diversified landscape, it was a time when grasslands stretched across the southern and eastern African continent, mixed with woods and sporadic water sources. This patchwork of ecosystems gave plentiful supplies to the land's inhabitants, influencing their everyday lives and survival methods. While the specifics of the Rhodesian man's life are lost in time, his existence serves as a link to our common human heritage. The Kabwe cranium is a tangible reminder of our early ancestors' fortitude, flexibility, and intellectual aptitude as they faced environmental adversities. Rhodesian man's tribe was most likely made up of adept hunters and gatherers who relied on their strength, intelligence, and social cohesion to survive. They refined their hunting abilities by tracking and catching a wide range of wildlife, from giant ungulates to small creatures. The existence of stone tools in the area indicates that the Kabwe people 
were skilled at making tools for hunting and processing food. In addition to hunting, the tribe engaged in gathering activities, utilizing the abundant plants that surrounded them. They would have collected fruits, nuts, and edible plants to create a balanced meal that would keep them well. These foraging skills were especially important when hunting was less successful or when seasonal fluctuations influenced wildlife abundance. Kinship and cooperation were most likely important aspects of the tribe's social system. Elders would have passed down wisdom and traditions to younger members, helping to perpetuate cultural practices that secured the community's survival and prosperity. The Kabwe cranium, with its distinguishing traits, represents an important chapter in the history of human evolution. It reflects the diversity of human predecessors who formerly roamed the southern African subcontinent. As archaic hominins were replaced by other hominin species, including Homo sapiens, the Rhodesian man's legacy has remained as a piece of our ancestral puzzle. The Broken Hill skull has an estimated cranial capacity of 1,230 cubic centimeters. While the skull capacity is similar to that of Homo sapiens, other characteristics, such as brain case shape and pronounced brow ridges, indicate an earlier species. As stated, the skull implies an incredibly robust individual with the most pronounced brow ridges of any known hominid. It was characterized as having a broad face, like Homo neanderthalensis, including big nasal bones and thick jutting brow ridges. These characteristics have led some experts to conclude that the skull marks a transitional period between Homo erectus and modern humans. As of the publication of this video, no attempts at extracting DNA or sequencing a genome from the Kabwe skull had been successful. Nevertheless, new research suggests the origin of anatomically modern humans may have occurred 500 miles, about 750 kilometers, south of the Kabwe site. These people could even be the descendants of Rhodesian man. According to a new examination of modern human mitochondrial genomes from the L0 lineage, the oldest known mitochondrial lineage on Earth, the earliest ancestors of anatomically modern Homo sapiens appeared in an area south of the Zambezi River in Botswana, southern Africa. Mitochondrial DNA acts like a time capsule of our ancestral mothers, accumulating changes slowly over generations. Therefore, comparing mitogenomes from various individuals reveals how closely they are connected. This is sometimes re-offered to as mitochondrial Eve hypothesis. Scientists gathered blood samples to create a comprehensive catalogue of mitogenomes from the L0 lineage. Researchers merged 198 new, rare mitogenomes to the current database of modern humans' earliest known population, the L0 lineage. This allowed them to refine the evolutionary tree of our earliest ancestral branches better than ever before. By combining the L0 lineage timeline with the linguistic, cultural and geographic distributions of different sublineages, the scientists discovered that the first anatomically modern Homo sapiens maternal lineage emerged 200,000 years ago in a homeland south of the greater Zambezi River Basin, which extends from northern Botswana to Namibia to the west and Zimbabwe to the east. The study also reviewed geological, archaeological and fossil evidence and discovered that this region formerly hosted Africa's largest lake system, Lake Magadikgadi. Before modern human emergence, the lake began to evaporate due to disturbances in the underlying tectonic plates. This would have created a vast wetland, which is known to be one of the most productive ecosystems for sustaining life. For 70,000 years, the ancient wetland ecosystem offered a stable ecological habitat in which the progenitors of modern people could survive. Investigators found significant genetic differences in contemporary humans' oldest maternal sublineages, indicating that our ancestors migrated away from their homeland between 130,000 and 110,000 years ago. The first migrants travelled northeast, followed by a second wave of migrants who went southwest. A third of the inhabitants remain in the motherland until today. In contrast to the northeasterly migrants, the southwesterly explorers appear to flourish, experiencing steady population growth, according to the study. The success of this migration was most likely a result of adaptation to marine foraging, which is further supported by extensive archaeological evidence along the southern tip of Africa.
the investigators wrote. To determine what drove these early human migrations, the scientists rebuilt Southern Africa's climate history over the last 250,000 years. The simulations suggest that the slow wobble of Earth's axis changes summer solar radiation in the Southern Hemisphere, leading to periodic shifts in rainfall across Southern Africa. These temperature variations would have created green, vegetated corridors first 130,000 years ago to the northeast, and then around 110,000 years ago to the southwest, allowing our oldest ancestors to travel away from their homeland for the first time. These first migrants left behind a population from their own country before spreading beyond Africa. But maternal descendants of the homeland population eventually adapted to the drying lands and can now be found in the larger Kalahari region. In fact, a number of genetic tests, particularly on mitochondrial DNA of living people, show that modern humans evolved in sub-Saharan Africa before leaving between 75,000 and 65,000 years ago to populate the Old World. However, additional genetic research, mostly on nuclear DNA, contradicts this African origin and emigration concept. The lack of early anatomically modern human fossils from sub-Saharan Africa has prevented paleontologists from testing rival hypotheses of human evolution. Indeed, reliably dated fossils are essential for understanding the trajectory of human evolution. One such fossil is a human skull discovered more than 50 years ago at Hofmeyer in South Africa's Eastern Cape province, and research dated the skull to 36,000 years ago. Although the skull was discovered over a half-century ago, its significance was only just recognized. At this age, the skull fills a huge gap in sub-Saharan Africa's human fossil record dating from approximately 70,000 to 15,000 years ago. During this critical period, the later Stone Age archaeological tradition, with its sophisticated stone and bone tools and artwork, emerges in sub-Saharan Africa, and anatomically modern people appear for the first time in Europe and Western Asia along with the equally complex Upper Paleolithic archaeological tradition. According to this research, this skull provides important support for genetic evidence, indicating that modern humans originated in sub-Saharan Africa and travelled to the Old World about this period. To determine the affinities of the Hofmeyer fossil, researchers employed three-dimensional skull dimensions known to discriminate recent human populations based on geographic distributions and genetic links. They compared the Hofmeyer skull to Upper Paleolithic skulls from Eurasia, as well as skulls from living humans in Eurasia and Sub-Saharan Africa, including the Khoisan, also known as Bushmen. Because the Khoisan are documented in South Africa's recent archaeological record, they should bear a close resemblance to the fossil. Instead, the Hofmeyer skull differs significantly from the Khoisan and shares a close relationship with Eurasian Upper Paleolithic specimens. Thus. This finding is extremely odd. The surprising similarity between a fossil skull from the southernmost tip of Africa and similarly ancient skulls from Europe is at odds with the out-of-Africa theory, which predicts that humans like those that inhabited Eurasia in the Upper Paleolithic should not be found in sub-Saharan Africa because that region was occupied by the physically distinct Khoisan at that time. According to the out-of-Africa theory, Around 70,000 years ago, modern humans emerged from their origins in Africa and spread around the world. The Hofmeyer skull is supposed to provide a glimpse into the morphology of this African population, implying the most recent common ancestor of all of us, no matter where we originate from. But this is not the case. So the search for the first modern human fossils in sub-Saharan Africa continues.